Let's talk money. Hello and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Money. I'm your host, Surabhi Upadhyay. Now, a lot of you have been writing into us, sending us queries on China. And most of you have noticed the rebound in that market, which is leading a lot of investors to wonder if they should take exposure to the Chinese market. Suddenly, there are queries on China-specific funds, whatnot. So we decided to do a proper classroom on global investing, make it a little more holistic, because it's not about trying to play a trading bounce in market A or market B or owning one fancy stock versus the other. It's about looking at your portfolio more holistically. Do global equity markets make sense for Indian investors? And if yes, what are the rules through which you can access them? What are the things to keep in mind? And what are the risks you should always consider before taking that investment call? Today, to answer those questions, I have with me Chintan Harya of ICICI Prudential AMC, as well as Mohit Gang, CEO and co-founder at Moneyfront.in. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining in. And I can already see some of the Diwali festivities behind Mohit. So I think it's that time of the year. Uh, but, you know, uh, really, we wanted to start off, uh, Chintan and Mohit, with, with broader thoughts. Like I said, the, the trigger for this conversation is obviously this 30% rise in China and then, you know, 10% fall in China that we've seen. People, you know, sit up and take notice of these things and then they wonder, oh, how can I participate in this rally? So, opening thoughts, Chintan. So, yes, I mean, India is only about 4% of the global market and uh, the rest, 96%, is outside. So, US has been one of the largest in terms of the global market space. China has caught attention now. It caught attention in 2016 as well. And I think way back in 2017-18, when Brazil did well, Indian markets were about 10-15%. Brazil was up about 100%. That also got noticed and there was a local uh, Brazil fund which got a lot of inflows. So, international investing has its own charm. And I think with people now focusing on asset allocation, we at ICIC have always been speaking about asset mm -hmm. allocation. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 15% asset allocation in international does make sense. But then international is again another completely different ball game with so many countries involved. Japan did very well in the last two years as yeah. well. Yeah. So there are so many moving parts, much like how in equities you'll have moving parts, you'll have sectors moving. Similarly, yeah. international. So you need obviously professional guidance and then you need to know exactly how to do it. But yes, today it is reasonably easy to get access Mm -hmm. Some of the limits are shut right now, I'm aware. But yes, people should have about 10 to 15 percent outside, but they need to know exactly how to do it. And that's mm -hmm. the where the tough part comes. Oh, that's where we have the two of you <laughs> to help out our uh, viewers. Mohit, uh, let's, let's get in your thoughts when people come to you with, uh, you know, uh, the need to make a fresh allocation. Would, would global markets be on your radar? Absolutely, Surbhi. Uh, first of all, to you and to all your viewers, uh, very happy festive season ahead. And yes, look, I think India has been a fantastic story for last uh, two, three odd years and for, in fact, uh, many years now. Uh, but my sense is if you were to just look at some small data points and one data point through which I'd like to open is that uh, on a one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 15 year scale, right? All these time scales, if you were to compare Indian markets with, let's say, in US market and S&P versus a Nifty, S&P has beaten Nifty on all these time frames, right? So here, here comes the thought along with what Chintan Bhai said, that uh, India is a very small component of global market cap, right? So if you want a truly diversified portfolio, if you really want to hedge against some bit of sovereign risk or hedge against whatever Indian markets or hedge against the volatility which you can perhaps uh, counter in Indian markets, then the right way for an investor is to have a, a diversified portfolio across global themes, basically, maybe 10 to 20% of the portfolio into international markets, either directly or through mutual funds. But yes, it's absolutely warranted. Okay, fair enough. So the, the operating uh, part of this is you should know exactly where to invest and how to invest in a very cost-effective and safe way, right? Now, as our guests have pointed out, there are two routes through which you can access global markets. One is by going direct, buying stocks directly. And the second is through the Indian mutual fund route. So, you know, Mohit, I want to start with uh, the, the former first, uh, because there are a lot of local brokers now that seem to have tie up with global brokers uh, and they, they're offering you access to a lot of global equities. But how does it work? And uh, is, is it primarily for the U.S. market or can you also access markets like, like Chintan said, you know, Japan, China and a lot of these other major names? So I think uh, anything and everything is now accessible to Indian investors. Uh, there are many platforms which have come up. Uh, to my mind, I think Interactive Brokers is one of the largest players globally uh, to buy anything, whether you want to buy ETFs, you want to buy direct stocks, you want to buy bonds, uh, or you just simply want to trade uh, global currencies. 
uh, you can do through that platform. It's it's uh, fairly simple and it's a it's a global platform and it gives you access to almost every single country in the group, uh, right? But the only thing which investors need to know is that it is all done through the LRS route, which is the liberalized remittance scheme, uh, which is monitored by the RBI. So every investor, every financial year has a cap of 250,000 USD under which he can invest into any of the global markets, right? So beyond that amount, you can't invest uh, abroad. So similar to uh, interactive brokers, there are platforms like Stockall, Vested, which gives you access, but they, gives you ex they give you access to niche markets. Uh, to my mind, I think interactive brokers is one platform which is universally uh, uh, acceptable and gives you access to almost all markets. Okay, so thematically that sounds great, but now the technicality is coming, Mohit, because... I might be a you know regular retail investor. I only have fifty thousand to invest or one lakh rupees to invest. So then, what about uh, you know basic minimum entry threshold barrier limits? What about uh, cost? How do I convert currency? Take us through step by step. Okay, uh, so look, these are fairly expensive mechanisms. Honestly, these are not for retail investors. My uh, two bits will be that if you are a retail investor, you're looking at smaller ticket sizes and you don't want to send your money overseas, right? Uh, when you use the liberalized remittance scheme, it is, it is akin to you sending your money outside of India or it is akin to you converting your money into dollars or into the underlying base currency of the country where you're investing in and, that convert, uh, and then investing. So there is a conversion cost, there are the platform charges, there are the broking charges, right? So the charges are pretty hefty and one has to be absolutely cognizant that whatever underlying theme might be, he or she is absolutely uh, confident that those charges perhaps are uh, nominal to the overall extent of gains which the investor is looking at. But my two bit will be, uh, if you are not an institutional or an h &I investor, then perhaps these are not the right ways of investing. Uh, I would still suggest that you have to then go through a mutual fund route, which is much more convenient, much more uh, democratized in the sense that the ticket sizes are fairly affordable and the liquidity is absolutely uh, uh, simple. Uh, the charges are minimalistic, right? And you know the management, you have some uh, recourse. If you, if you really want to uh, access uh, the fund house folks, you can go ahead, speak with the representatives and you can understand the underlying theme and everything, right? So mm -hmm. my sense is for retail investors, the direct platform or the direct route requires a lot of research, a lot of due diligence. One has to be cognizant of the charges. These are not easy mechanisms. And per, you have to do a lot of reporting to RBI uh, for the funds which you're sending abroad. And once, if you want to get it back, then the taxability becomes a big factor. So all those are, are pretty uh, uh, tricky issues to tackle with, right? So it's not for retail investors. Unless you are a H&I and you want to send your funds abroad or you have some ultimate usage abroad, for the funds. That's when you choose these uh, methods and try and go abroad through the direct platforms. Otherwise, I think MF route remains the best one. Oh, okay. So it's thumbs up uh, for mutual funds, Indian mutual funds, even if you want to go overseas. Uh, take your points and concerns on board, Mohit. So Chintan, come in on this. And some of the comparisons that Mohit was drawing, right, that uh, the charges would be a lot higher if you're going through a broker directly, even if it is an Indian broker linked to a global broker. I mean, typically, how do those charges compare, let's say, you know, uh, with a MF expense ratio, a global fund expense ratio? So, uh, global fund expense ratios, much like local funds are regulated, there are caps of 2 to 2.25 percent, depending okay. on what route it is. If it's mm -hmm. a passive fund, then 1 percent is the cap. And within that overall 1 percent, the entire expense is extra managed. Besides the expenses, of course, like Mohit Bhai mentioned, uh, retail investor will have limited bandwidth to understand which sector, which segment, when NASDAQ or when, let's say, Japan or when US. Let the experts do it. So we mutual funds are trying to our best to do it. Currently, if you look at it, because of the $7 billion limit, I mean, of the 60 lakh crore plus mutual fund AUM that is there, only about 60,000 crores or less is there in, uh, you know, international funds because of the limit. So it's less than 1%. So it's not meaningful in, in, in the context of the overall mutual fund industry. But yes, it is meaningful from an absolute point. Uh, but the costs, etc., much like how we manage the active funds on the Indian side, etc., we try to break it as less as possible for the investors, be it the currency conversion costs when we remit, etc. So the point is, at lowest cost, the management of the funds investing in the right manner so that investors get the right exposure. Mm -hmm. And that's where when we thought of it in the last 10, 15 years, we not only had, let's say, a US fund or a NASDAQ or a global stable fund, we also brought in fund of funds where we could make the shifts 
in in right. the in the mutual fund which help investors to participate currently they are all shut of course because of the limit yeah. but our idea was to provide solutions to investors and through the fund of fund route that basically is something you know i actually want to understand the the difference and the different routes but just to complete the point on uh, direct global stock investing the charges that you mentioned mohit i mean ballpark rough you know uh, range across different brokers what would it be and we're talking about maybe a brokerage fee a currency conversion charge that you pay to the bank so let's say you want to at least make a you know 8 9 10% return equity because it's equity that you are playing and on top of that typically how much can the charges be to be honestly i'll not have an exact extent but my sense is the currency conversion uh, can go up to honestly 50 to 70 bips uh, in extreme cases when the ticket sizes are very small and very retail uh right and then you will have brokerage charges and platform fees and uh, other charges which could be as high as around 2 odd percent and it can go even higher uh, uh from that perspective so if when you club all these together it's a it's a fairly expensive mechanism uh mm. though i will not have an exact uh, break up of mm. the fee which each individual platform charges and plus it will also varies from currency to currency and country to country so So, if okay. you're investing in the sure. US market, perhaps it might be cheaper because uh, dollar is a fairly uh, uh, widely accepted currency and 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 uh, best used, right? So, but uh, if you go into exotic markets, let's say if you want to invest in a Brazil market or even per se Chinese market, right? And if you want to pick direct stocks or pick up an uh, index directly, then it might be a fairly expensive proposition. Absolutely. Okay, I think uh, you've uh, driven the point home really well. That for retail investors who are not dealing with very large pools of money. mutual funds remain the best route through which we can take exposure to global stocks so what we'll do is we'll take a break on that note when we come back we dive into the mutual fund route full throttle a lot of funds are shut why are they shut what is their structure how do you sort of uh, navigate this what are your options today if you want to take global exposure through indian mutual funds we discuss this after the break let's talk money 